25 years ago that the foundation stone for JET, the joint European Taurus, was laid at Cullum in the UK, and 20 years ago that JET was officially opened by Her Majesty the Queen. In May 2004, these anniversaries led to a celebration of this unique collaborative research into fusion energy. It was an opportunity to meet old friends and former colleagues, a time to appreciate the work of those who made JET possible. The current EFTA associate leader for JET, Jerome Pamela, spoke for today's scientists. We have here many of those who have played a key role in, in the origin of, of JET, the start of this beautiful adventure. And they mix with those who, who are using JET today, and that's, that's extremely good. And as one of these users, I must uh, say that I feel very privileged to, to use this machine with others. And uh, on behalf of all users of today, uh, I, we, we have to pay tribute. I want to pay tribute to the founding fathers of JET. EFTA JET can be seen as more than a triumph for scientific research. It provides a fine example of what can be achieved through cooperation between European countries. Philippe Bousquin, EU Commissioner for Research, recalled how JET was designed and built both on time and on budget. This considerable achievement has not gone unnoticed by today's governments, and current director at Cullum, Sir Chris Llewellyn Smith, read out a letter from UK Prime Minister Tony Blair. This is Tony Blair's message. It gives me great pleasure to send my congratulations to this celebration of the major achievements of JET. The UK is proud to host such an important European facility alongside its own fusion research program at Cullum. JET has shown what can be achieved through European cooperation. The sum is greater than the parts. The seeds for JET were sown as long ago as the 1958 Atoms for Peace conference held in Geneva. Donato Palumbo, former director of research at Euratom, recalled how scientific collaboration took place against a background of political discord during the dark days of the Cold War. Scientists on both sides of the Iron Curtain were in agreement about what needed to be done and keen to work together to achieve it. That is not to say there was immediate agreement on what size or configuration of tokamak was required. But after much debate, the familiar D shape of jet emerged and was built. Paul-Henri Rebu, a former director of JET, described how subsequent experimental results have shown how the design was right and how JET has achieved its objectives. The first tritium operation in the world was done on JET on the 9th of November 91 and produced a peak power of nearly 2 megawatt. With a, a notable moment was the first ever plasma fusion trial using tritium in 1991. JET has continued to build on this work year on year and is still the key facility for fusion energy research. Francis Troyan, former chairman of the JET Scientific Council, puts this long and glorious history down to decisions made at its design. This machine has been built very conservatively, full of margin and everything, and I think if this machine is alive today, it's not only due to its parameters, it's due to the fact that it has been able, through the time, to evolve, follow all the developments, incorporate into it the new elements that come from somewhere else. Example, the diverters. Example, new tires on the outside. And all these things is due to this conservative engineering, and I think this is uh, what has allowed JET to remain at the forefront. And, argues Jérôme Pamela, this is what makes JET so valuable for the future. Fourteen diagnostic enhancements projects on JET are due to come online in 2005. These will not only significantly upgrade the scientific capability of JET, they will also be valuable tools for testing the diagnostic technologies of ITER. And JET's usefulness will not come to an end when ITER construction begins, says Frank Briscoe, UK AEA Cullum Operations Director. But from a technical point of view, uh, we believe that JET could be run for another decade or more during the whole period of ITER construction. On this optimistic note, the JET scientists, past and present, along with their guests, 
went on to enjoy a barbecue, further discussion of past triumphs, and most of all, their hopes for even greater achievements for the future. <laughs>